In this video, I'm going to discuss sigma notation, which comes up a lot in discrete mathematics and in continuous mathematics like calculus. Reading sigma notation is actually very straightforward. We just have to recognize the different components and understand the order in which we have to approach the evaluation. In the sigma notation, we have what's called an index. In this case, the index is k. And these numbers, k equals 1 to 7, tells us the smallest value of k and the largest value of k. So this is telling us that the index k is going to be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So we're going to get all seven of those numbers. Uh, for each of those values of k, we're going to um, use this expression, which usually involves a k. So 99% of the time, this will have a k in it, because it'll be an expression that we can substitute the k values into. If there is no k in that expression, then that means we are literally adding exactly the same quantity to itself seven times. And that's a little unusual because sigma notation would not be the most useful way to, to write that. So we'll call these the terms of the, of the sum. So here's the step process. First, list the values of the index variable. So in this case, the values of k go from 1 to 7. And you can see I put blanks above them to give myself room to write step 2. Two is compute the term formula for each value of k. So for k equals 1, the term formula, 3k plus 1, would be equal to 4. When k equals 2, we would get 7. And finally, when k equals 7, if we plug 7 in for k into the term formula, 3k plus 1, we'll get 22. So that's step 2, is to evaluate what the terms are. And then step three is simply to add them together. So sometimes sigma notation is called summation notation because the result of, of evaluating a sigma expression is always a sum. So in this case, we would have the sum of the numbers 4 plus 7 plus 10 up to 22. And we could do that uh, in a couple of different ways, but the result for that will be 91. So really, no matter how complicated the expression is in parentheses, the term expression, uh, your ability to evaluate, to plug numbers into it, is the only thing that is stopping you from evaluating a sigma. On the other hand, writing sigma notation can be difficult because, as we've seen in the earlier part of this section, sometimes it's hard to find a formula for a sequence of terms. So the, the hardest part about writing sigma notation is that we need to be able to do exactly the same process we've been doing in section 1.2 in finding a closed formula. For example, if we wanted to write the sum 1 plus 9 plus 17 plus 25 plus 33 plus 41 in sigma notation, then I can see that the uh, first thing I need to do is choose an index variable and a range. That's sort of like the K before. I'm going to use a different letter here, I, just to emphasize that the, the actual name of the index variable really doesn't matter a whole lot. So there are six values there, so I can think of those as coming from an index i ranging from 1 to 6. And if I'm trying to reproduce the, the picture I had before, I would have my values of i going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so what I need then is a formula so that when I plug each of these values of i into the formula, I get each of these terms that are going to be summed. That's exactly the same process that we talked about for finding the closed for a sequence. So in this case, I can determine that this formula, and I'm not going to go through the process here, that'll be in an earlier video, but I'll find out that this formula, 8i minus 7, does exactly what I want it to do. When I look at values of i, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or sorry, 5, 6, and I plug uh, values of i into this formula, when I put i equals 1 in here, I get 1. When I put i equals 2, I get 9. When I put i equals 3, I get 17, and so on. And so, um, let's see, I have a typo here. This is 6. So, um, so this sigma notation, i equals 1 to 6, 8i minus 7, is the sigma notation expression for this sum. One thing that I should point out is that there's nothing magic about the index starting at 1. Uh, the reason that we have both values given in our sigma notation is because 
You can start and stop with anything you'd like. Obviously, when we're writing sigma notation, we get to pick where our, our index starts and stops. So it's in our best interest to make it easy on ourselves. So if we're creating our own sigma notation, we will very rarely use anything other than a starting value of maybe one or zero, depending on the problem. But if we have to read sigma notation, then we're at the mercy of whoever wrote the, the sigma in the first place. And so then we do have to be able, able to deal with different starting values. So here are a few practice problems. I'm going to highlight one of them, and then I'll pause and I'll let you try other ones, and I'll put the, uh, the answers on the next slide. But the one I wanted to point out was this one because it illustrates a couple of things. First of all, it has fractions in it, which we all love, uh, but also it, it has a starting index value of 2. But notice that I can approach this exactly the same way I did before. My index is i. My possible values are 2, 3, 4, and 5. The values of i run from 2 to 5. Then for each of those, I can figure out what this expression is. When I plug 2 in for i in here, I get 2 times 2 minus 1 over 3, which is 1. When I plug 3 in here, I'll get 5 thirds. When I plug 4 in here, I'll get uh, 7 thirds. And when I plug 5 in here, I get 9 thirds, which is 3. So the answer for the sigma notation is just simply to add together 1 plus 5 thirds plus 3, which if you do it, you'll get 8. So that would be the evaluation of that particular sigma notation. All right, I'll stop there. Uh, to consider trying the other five problems on this page and uh, pause the video and we'll count to three and I'll put the slide up that has the solutions on it.